Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me. My name is Kimberly Smith, and I'm with Celebrity Cruises, and I am here with the Cruise Web. I am so excited to bring you another webinar. This is going to be a webinar, all things Celebrity Cruises, of course. We're going to talk about a lot. I want to get rocking and rolling because I don't want to hold you up, and I know your time is valuable. So let's get started, uh, Celebrity Cruises, guys. Celebrity Cruises, unbelievable year. Um, I have to say, I'm proud to say that I have been on five cruises since uh, the post-pandemic, if you will. And cruising, wow, did I miss cruising. Um, I remember stepping on the gangway for the very first cruise after the pandemic. And, you know, tears did come to my eye because, guys, I love cruising. And it just felt so good to be back to normal. It felt so wonderful being on a ship. And you really felt like you were in a bubble. Everything was absolutely fantastic. And it's good to get back to normal. And I think we all need that. So let's talk about Celebrity Cruises. We've got a new ship to talk about. I also want to talk about where in the world is Kim going to go this year? I'm going to ask for your help. And I need your help. Where am I going to go on vacation? I've got one vacation planned already for March. Um, we actually lift and shifted a few times. <laughs> so for those of you who have multiple sailings that you've done the same, you feel my pain. I need to get on the ship. I think I'm going on Apex in March. Um, so I might see you if anyone's on Apex in March. See you there. Um, but I'm really excited because finally my uh, 2020 cruise, I'll finally be able to take it in 2022. Woohoo! So I've got to figure out though, what else am I going to do? Because if those of you who don't know me, I like to get out of town. Like every other month, I like to be on a ship. And when you work for a cruise line, hey, it's easy to do that. So not bad. Now my cruise line, I'm going to brag about a little bit. My cruise line, um, Celebrity Cruises. Innovative design, we're known for our culinary, but you know with these new ships that they've come out with the Edge Class series, I have to say, it, the design of these ships is far superior than anything else that we've done in the past. It's absolutely amazing. But what makes a lot of our sailings special is something that other cruise lines don't necessarily have. It's called the Retreat Class, and guys, that means all suites, all exclusive, and always included. So basically, think of an umbrella. I love this analogy. I open up your umbrella and underneath the umbrella are all your suites. Everything from entry level sky suite all the way to an iconic suite on our edge series. So you've got everything in between. And one warning I'm going to say, once you book a suite, my friends, guess what? You are never going back. I was able to finally go in the retreat class and I have to say, wow. Wow, it was absolutely amazing. And it, this is a funny story. I had to do back to back. I was in sweet class on a vacation, then had to go for work and they put me in a regular balcony stateroom and I walked into my door and I went, oh my, it's much smaller. After spending a week enjoying all the amenities, my personal retreat host, enjoying my beautiful spacious sun deck where my waiters waited on me hand and foot, bought me drinks to the pool. Um, and, you know, really having that service, extra service, extra attention, it was really funny, um, you know, walking into my little smaller room. But, hey, no matter what room you pick on Celebrity, you can't go wrong. But I do have to tell you, you know, the retreat does make us unique, makes us very different. And try it. You'll love it. All your amenities are included. Your beverage package, which is a premium beverage package, your high-speed internet, your gratuities, and, of course, all your onboard credit. So you got to love it. So, welcome Celebrity Beyond. I cannot believe it's 2022 already, and she's coming this April. We, I feel like we just took, you know, ownership of Apex. Now, we did that in 2020 in the middle of a pandemic, and I was just able to get on her um, in 21, in the fall of 21. So, now here we go, another ship coming in. And guys, this ship is amazing because she's so different. What we've done is we've learned things. We were able to make adjustments on things that we did on Edge and Apex. And now we're enhancing it and just making it that much better on Celebrity Beyond. So I can't wait to share that with you. So I want to take a moment and share some slides. Um, she is more spacious, spacious. she's more luxurious. Um, she, we have more suites, more staterooms. It's a larger ship, of course, and more open spaces. But most importantly, my friends, we have more bars and lounges. Woohoo! Everybody's cheering. Um, it's funny because, um, you know, I went to a meeting, a sales meeting, and the uh, director of hotel operations, 
he was telling us, he said, you know, that's one thing on Edge and Apex, we missed the ball. We don't have enough bars and lounges. Um, so they were able to add more on the Beyond. So we're excited to see what she has to offer. Now the Beyond is gonna have uh, two sets of itineraries. So she'll be doing in the uh, summer months, she'll be doing her Mediterranean, um, where she'll have nine and 10 night Mediterranean cruises from both, both Barcelona and Rome. And then of course, she's gonna be doing the Caribbean itineraries um, so we've got lots of different options to get on board and, you know, check out this big, beautiful, brand new ship. And we're really excited to see her. Um, you know, I've been following some social media on online and, you know, they did ship visits and ship tours and people are just, you know, absolutely raving. All the executives are raving about this ship and how unbelievable it is. You know, it's funny. I've worked for this company for a long time and every time a new ship comes out, you're like, oh, how can we really top this one? It, it's just amazing how we can do it time and time again and just get better and better and better with each ship that comes out. So I love that. This ship, uh, Kelly Hoppin is um, still one of our designers on board this beautiful ship. She's done everything from creating a, just a different look and feel uh, for our iconic suites, keeping that beautiful ceiling to floor windows. Um, they made some changes to the edge villas, of course. Um, yes, guys, those edge villas, you do have your own plunge pool. How cool is that? Um, I was able, when I was in um, the retreat class on that one cruise I was telling you about, I made friends with um, some folks and they were amazing. They were more than happy to give us a tour of their um, edge villa. Oh my God, it was just absolutely beautiful. Um, and we were able to hang out with them a little bit and you know it's it's nice to make nice friends that have really big rooms <laughs> so gotta love it so you, that's one thing in the retreat you do meet everybody hanging out at the pool meeting everybody in the re uh in the retreat sun deck in the lounge and of course in lumine the restaurant now this is probably one of my favorite new things that we are doing differently on Celebrity Beyond. Now, here's the deal, and I hope you love this just as much as I do. So those of you who've um, experienced a retreat class and then uh, in a sky suite, and then there's those that have maybe experienced um, aqua class. I like them both. They're for very different reasons. Both have specialty restaurant, a special restaurant you go to. If you go to aqua class, you're going to have blue. And then if you're in the retreat, uh, class, then you're, you know, you're going to be able to go to Lumine. Now guys, this is the merging of the best of both worlds. They're taking aqua class sky suites, merging it. So now you're going to have a spa concierge. They make all your spa appointments. Of course, you'll get preference. You get unlimited access to the sea thermal suite. Love that. Complimentary fitness classes. Woohoo. Clean cuisine, in room dining options. That's really special. That's very unique and different. All the amenities of the retreat, of course, you'll have access to the retreat lounge, the sun deck, Lumine, and you can also dine in blue, your choice. So that's just yet another option for you. All kinds of really cool things, new meditation TV, all kinds of, um, you know, health and wellness benefits when you're booking into aqua class and now merge that with a sky suite. And oh my God, you can't go wrong. So this was exciting and something I wanted to share with you. We went back the wrong way. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I guess Kim's gonna learn how to use the clicker on her computer today, so bear with me. So guys, um, here's some pictures. And I'm just gonna show you a few pictures because I think pictures really do do it justice on in this particular situation. Because it's funny, I was as I was talking to the hotel director, he had just come back. Um, from overseas visiting the ship and he said one thing I can tell you it looks just like the pictures it's absolutely amazing the renderings are just fantastic and guys this is what the retreat sun deck will look like it used to just be one deck oh no on beyond we're going to make it and expand it you got two levels you've got all these great little nooks and crannies you've got um, your own jacuzzis of course your pool just for that good old sun deck i have to say the sun deck was one of my favorite spots when i was in retreat class of course the resort deck again not too shabby guys check out that pool that is actually a lap pool. Um, I don't know why on other ships we've always had, you know, cut it up and had, you know, smaller uh, multiple pools. Not really sure why, but here we go. Now this is the wave of the future. Look at that beautiful art installation. We've got all those fabulous deck chairs. It's just absolutely amazing. And they do have the unique walking running track, um, which I love because I am a runner. So it makes it a lot easier. There's some elevation in there too. Um, and it is fantastic. But 
I have to say, I'm excited for these fabulous rooftop garden. All right, so when I was on last time, I have to say, watching a movie, sitting outside in the middle of the Caribbean, watching Pirates of the Caribbean, not too shabby. There's something about Johnny Depp on my screen when I'm sitting there watching a movie outside. Unbelievable. And uh, take a look at those cantilever pools that are, are going to be over by the rooftop garden area as well. So lots going on, like some subtle changes we've got. Changes onto a lot of things on the ship, but I would be remiss if I didn't talk about putting it all on the table, folks. Yep, we're talking about dining. We're going one step above and beyond. We've got 32 distinctive food and beverage um, experiences on board the ship. We've got 14 cafes, bars, lounges, eight specialty restaurants. That's unbelievable, unheard of. And four main dining rooms that are absolutely amazing. Four complimentary casual dining venues. And of course, two exclusive restaurants. Not too shabby. We're putting it all on the table. I love it. New concepts. We're reimagining the experiences. We really are creating those new and special menu items um, to make you go wow. But I need some help. And here's what I need help with. I need to help. Where was Kim going to go on vacation this year? Now, I've already told you I'm already booked for March. So mom and I are going on our little Caribbean cruise uh, on Apex. So we're excited about that. But guys, I can't sit home. I got to go somewhere. Where am I going to go? So I know this is a busy slide, but I love this slide because it gives me some options and it gets me to say, hmm, where might I want to go? So I'm going to look at that new ship, the Beyond, and ooh, where is she? In summer, she's in Europe. Look, she's going to go to a lot of Barcelona. She's going to go out of Rome. And then, of course, in the winter, she's going to go to the Caribbean. Okay, out of Fort Lauderdale. Not too bad. I can get to Fort Lauderdale easy enough. But, you know, I want to do something different. I haven't traveled in a while. You know, I've been on five cruises, mostly in the Caribbean right now, just because that's, you know, uh, where they've been when they came back out. So now I need to explore and I think I need to go somewhere more exciting. So, all right, I got Europe as an option. Uh, look at that edge and Apex. They're both in Europe. Ooh, they're going on to Amsterdam or Rome or Barcelona, you know, of all these years. I really haven't gone out of Barcelona. That might be an option on edge. I might have to take a look at that itinerary. Oh, but Alaska. Guys, I was supposed to go to Alaska in 2020. Well, that didn't happen. So maybe I'll revisit that and maybe think about Alaska. I love our Alaska cruise tours. Hmm, I don't know. Look at the old Pacific Coastal. Gosh, I don't remember us ever doing a Pacific Coastal. We'll have to check that one out. And then, of course, Bermuda, my standard. I usually do Bermuda at least twice a year. It goes out of Bayonne, New Jersey. I actually live in upstate New York, so it's a very easy drive for me. Um, so not bad. And then, of course, well, we can be remiss if we didn't talk about the fabulous Galapagos. Um, you know, that's a bucket list item of mine. I haven't done it. A number of my colleagues have, and I'm definitely putting that on the list as well. So, oh, so many options. I hope I have enough time to be able to hit all these places. And I hope I have enough vacation time. That's the other thing I better check. But let's talk about Alaska. Because, guys, I have to tell you, we were able to get to Alaska for a very short season this past year. Um, and sadly, of course, we didn't go there in 2020. So I really am thinking I might want to take a look at Alaska. I've got three ships to choose from. I can either do Eclipse, um, Solstice, or the Revolutionized Millennium. Now, what the heck does Revolutionized Millennium mean? That means basically what we've done is totally redone the ship from the studs. We've made the rooms larger. We've um, really beautified all the... Um, the open spaces, we've done an amazing job interior out to outside. It's just unbelievable um, from, you know, stem to stern. We've redone this and really made it lighter and brighter and made it a big, beautiful new ship. So you've got um, three options and the Millennium is going to do those northbound and southbound itineraries, which fit very well with a cruise tour. Um, so that might be an option for me as well. So I've got lots of things to choose from. Alaska overview. You know, I left this slide in here basically, guys, because just to remind us, we are starting our season a little bit earlier. We are going to start in May and we're going to go through mid-September. Um, so that's really, that's really cool for us, a little bit different. Um, we've got lots of things to choose from. We even have some Canadian Rocky cruise tours. Um, the Eclipse and the Millennium will continue to visit the Icy Street Point, which to me is an absolute highlight. Guys, um, being able to see those glaciers, um, it's just breathtaking. I, you know, 
I don't know, I'm going to have a tough time choosing here. But I want to share this slide because this is really cool. What do people expect to see in Alaska? Everybody that I talk to has a different, um, you know, a different reason for going to Alaska. People want adventure. People want to see glaciers. People want to see all the wildlife. They want to see, you know, the, the history. There's a ton of history with the gold rush, all the native cultures. Um, you know, you've got breathtaking landscapes. There's nothing better. I remember, uh, you know, even just going in the inside, cruising through the inside passage, sitting in my, um, on my balcony and just watching um, you know, going through the most beautiful, picturesque, the mountains, it's, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I always tell this funny little story when I was a travel agent many, many moons ago, um, before I started working for celebrity, of course, um, you know, they were giving out the, what we call familiarization trips and, you know, the girl next to me, they gave her Hawaii and they gave me Alaska and I was really upset. I'm like, why did she get a Hawaii? And you know what, when I came back from Alaska, I understand why they gave me Alaska. Alaska is one of the most breathtaking places I have ever been uh, to date. And I've been a lot of places. And don't get me wrong, Hawaii, I love you, aloha. Uh, and But at the end of the day, I have to say, it, this is just like the most beautiful, picturesque, untouched land. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I know I get it now. I get why Alaska is so important. And if you haven't been, I highly recommend put it on your bucket list because it's gorgeous. It's so gorgeous that I'm thinking of going back. You know, I'm, I had been there a couple times before, but it's been years. So I always like to revisit places. You know, over time you grow, you have new appreciation when you go different places and you revisit and do maybe different things when you go back. We still go to fabulous ports of call, such as like Juno and Ketchikan. We do the Icy Strait Point, as I mentioned. We've got, uh, which we visit Glacier Bay National Park. Uh, you go flight seeing. That is the most amazing thing you can do, getting one of these little planes. Um, they're like the little water planes, if you will. Um, scary, but let me tell you, once you're up there, it's it's breathtaking. Sitka, Skagway, Victoria, you've got plenty of things to do. I won't read you all the slides, but guys, it, there's just so many fun things. I remember doing that uh, Klondike Gold Rush tour. That was so much fun. You actually pan for gold. Um, you really get to see how the Russian architecture, too, also comes into play in Skagway. Um, it's just, it's so fun and so neat. Oh, and I can't forget dog sledding. I think dog sledding is one of the coolest things I ever did. Um, you know, I, I came back joking. I'm going to join the Iditarod. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm not so good at dog sledding, but I like to pet the dogs too much anyways. So when we were talking about going to Alaska, and this is just a gorgeous picture. And, you know, we talk about maybe doing a cruise tour. If you're going to go all the way to Alaska, folks, I mean, yes, you can do the seven day cruise. But if you have the time, I highly recommend put a cruise tour and add the tour. The tours will go anywhere from nine to 13 nights. So you've got your seven night cruise and then you add on um, the extra nights to do the actual uh, uh, interior of Alaska. And you're going to see so much more. You have a dedicated tour director. They're with you the entire time. All of your transportation is included. It's really a no brainer. We call it a seamless experience and it truly is. You have deluxe motor coaches and that Wilderness Express. So that is with a picture that you see the domed car that you're going through the Alaskan Railway. Um, and it's just so much fun. And one thing I want to point out about our Wilderness Express. Now, guys, that's our train car. On there is a dining uh, section down below and you would go for lunch or dinner based on what time of day that you're on uh, in the dining car. And uh, we actually have chefs that prepare our meals fresh. Other cruise lines can't say that because, guys, we're not the only cruise line that can take you um, to Alaska. Um, I get that. But I can tell you exactly one of the reasons that I go with Celebrity to Alaska is one just for that reason. You're having all the culinary and you're having that fabulous experience on the cruise. Why not bring that to your tour as well? Um, it's unbelievable. And we do stay at the coolest and finest lodges um, uh, in Alaska. So it's breathtakingly gorgeous. Some great pictures of some of the different places that you can visit. Of course, when you go on your tours, Fairbanks, great little quaint city, you do the little uh, riverboat cruise. It's a little uh, honky-tonky, but it was so much fun, I have to say. Anchorage, a great, a much bigger city than I actually thought. Alaska is actually a ski lodge. Um, you can take a, a gondola up to the top of the mountain. There's a beautiful restaurant up there. Talkeetna, you can do flight seeing, of course. So many different things. I remember there was a ton of restaurants and bars, and we sort of went bar hopping in Talkeetna one night. It was so much fun. 
Seward and of course Homer. Guys, there's just so many places and so many things to see and do. Gotta love it. So in review for Alaska cruise tours, of course, they're very authentic. We've got the finest lodges. Our service is impeccable. And of course, uh, the transportation, all the deluxe um, luxury experiences that you're going to have, um, not only on your cruise, but you're going to have them on land as well. So why not put the best together and come join us in Alaska? So I think I'm going to mark that on my calendar. I think I'm going to maybe do that. Maybe I'll, I'll pick a date, uh, maybe like later summer. But... I did, if you notice, I have my eye on this Pacific Coastal too, and I might tie in Alaska and back it up with this Pacific Coastal, because guys, there's a, a cool option that I found. Here's an eight night Pacific Coastal leaving September 16th from Vancouver to Los Angeles. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to start in Vancouver and end in Los Angeles. That's neat. I'm going to visit Victoria, British Columbia, Astoria, Oregon, San Francisco, Santa Barbara, Canalita Island. You know, it's really funny. I've been to a couple of those places, but, you know, I was doing some research. Um, if you're a foodie, if you love all that fresh seafood, these are the places for you. Some unbelievable restaurants right at the pier. There's a lot of walking trails. There's, for my adventure seekers, of course, there's all kinds of Jeep tours and RVs that you can rent. Um, and then, of course, those wine lovers. Yeah, I'm a wino. Absolutely. They are known in these cities, um, you know, go to San Francisco, not that far, Napa Valley, um, in, Astor in Astoria, Oregon, uh, some of the finest grapes. So really, this is a perfect itinerary for me because I can do just about everything that I love. And oh, by the way, I'm going to spend two glorious days on this beautiful uh, renovated ship called the Celebrity Millennium. So I love it. So now I'm thinking I got Marge taken care of. Now I'm thinking maybe later summer, maybe that later August and then into September, I could do Alaska, back it up to my lovely um, Pacific Coastal. So I think that's a plan so far, but you know me, I don't know, need some more. And then I was thinking, guys, it's been two years since I've been to Bermuda. I used to go to Bermuda twice a year because it was easy for me to hop on the ships. Well, guess what? I think I need to go back. So if you have never been to Bermuda, I highly recommend get on the website. Let's check out Bermuda folks, because it is probably one of my favorite destinations. My mom shares the same opinion. We go to Bermuda, it's just gorgeous. It, pink sand beaches so whether you're a golfer there's more golf courses on this 22 mile long island it's just un it's, it's spectacular it's a british colony they're very proper um it's not like going to the caribbean and you know in the caribbean you'll have ah pretty lady let me braid your hair you know it's they're not bugging you they're not trying to sell you stuff they are just unbelievable people they're so friendly they're so warm and welcoming and they want to show you their beautiful island. And let me tell you, we've got lots of different itineraries. We're mixing it up a little this year, which I think is fabulous. Um, we still have those seven night Bermuda itineraries um, that are going to go in, look at that, in June, July. Um, but we also have added, and I think I've got my eye on this one, May 4th. Look at that nine night Bermuda stopping in Newport, Newport, Rhode Island in Charleston, South Carolina. Oh my God, that sounds like fun. And I've got an overnight in Charleston. That sounds like a plan. I've never been to Charleston. I don't know why I've never been to Charleston. But you know, that Southern charm, hospitality, meet that with a celebrity cruise. I think I've got the best of both worlds and I'm going to be able to, you know, go check out the mansions in Newport, go to Charleston, you know, soak up the that culture and really be able to uh, have a different kind of vacation instead of just doing my seven night Bermuda. Why not throw a couple extra ports in there? Now, if I wanted to go later in May, I can certainly do the Newport in a 10 night. So that gives me an extra day. I've got two nights stay uh, uh, in Kings Wharf. Huh, that sounds pretty cool. Three days at sea. I still love my sea days. That looks cool. And then there's that 10 night Bermuda in just Charleston. So guys, I got lots of options here for my summer as well. So you know, man, I got Bermuda, I've got Alaska, I've got Pacific Coastal, and of course I've got that Caribbean cruise starting my year off in March. Hmm, well, I don't know. Do you think that's enough? I don't know, maybe I wanna hit Europe next because, you know, I haven't been to Europe in a while. You know, Europe's been shut down. So, hey, now it's time to get back out there and explore. And I really, you know, there's certain things I've done, there's certain things I haven't done. I'm one of these people, when I start looking at Europe, 
I think to myself, you know, do I want to revisit the places that I've been a long time ago? Do I want to try something new? And I don't know. I really got to just take a look and maybe we'll look at a, a grid and see where we can go. But our Europe, look at this. I think this is a really cool slide. 54 overnight stays in 22 versus only 37 in 21. So guys, we listened. People want those extra um, stays. And look at all the ports that we're going to be doing those overnights in, which I think is fantastic. Um, love to see uh, Reykjavik on there. Love to see Portugal. Look at Porto in Lisbon. We've got Jerusalem, Istanbul, like unbelievable. We haven't been to Istanbul since 2015. Really? I think that's amazing. We got seven ships doing Europe. And so I'm going to have way too many choices. We got the beautiful new celebrity beyond, as we said. Um, we've got all the edge class series. And then, of course, we've got reflection, our revolutionized silhouette, constellation, and infinity. So I don't know. I'm going to have a hard time picking. So I think I'm going to need your help. Let's take a look at Europe. There's just a little snippet of, of all the places that we're going to be going. But here's our at a glance. Okay. Now we've got that new ship. Remember we said she's going to be doing the Mediterranean. She's going to go from Rome and Barcelona. We could do that Italy, Greece, and Malta. That is appealing to me. I might have to do that one. We've got a little Spain, France, and Italy. Mm, that sounds good too because you remember I'm a wino. So I'm going to be eating that one right up. And then, of course, APAC, she's doing the Baltics. Look at, she's got an Iceland and Ireland. That one's intriguing to me. I might have to take a look at that one. And, you know, you can't go wrong with the Scandinavian and Russia itineraries. It's absolutely gorgeous, breathtaking views, and really just a different culture to understand. I did that on a cruise, God, probably about 15 years ago. And it was really funny because I, in my mind, I thought Russia was this dark, dreary place. It was absolutely gorgeous. Canals. Hermitage, the museum, I went to the Russian ballet, um, just the big, beautiful colored domes, uh, the architecture, just fantastic. Um, so, you know, perception is everything. And when you get there and experience it, it's very different. Um, I've got, you know, a little bit of everything on here. My gosh, I really just don't know how I'm going to be able to pick and choose. I do also see down there in the infinity, I see that, ooh, best of Spain and Portugal. That one might appeal to me as well. So this is why I need your help. And this is why we're doing the webinar so I can figure out where am I going to go. And guys, I, I did see this one and I didn't want you to uh, forget. Remember I was talking about that beautiful celebrity beyond She's doing her maiden voyage. Now, I could book that one in April. That might mess up my plans, though, for my Bermuda because it might run into that one. So I might have to think about this one. But her maiden voyage is a 10-night Western Europe. She's going to sail out of Southampton in the UK. Then she's going to be doing her 9- and 10-night Mediterraneans. Look at that. She's got an overnight in Florence. Uh, La Spezia, first time ever, of course. And she does, does those oh beautiful late-night stays in Santorini to experience that beautiful Santorini sunset. I tell you, some of the most amazing sunsets around the world. And, you know, Santorini's right on the on the top 10 list for me. Absolutely gorgeous. So I picked out a couple itineraries here. These are sort of our Northern Europe experiences because, you know, I, I was appealing, you know, that Scandinavia, Russia, I said was appealing that Ireland and Iceland seems really neat. And then the Norwegian fjords. Now that's a cool opportunity too. The apex and the silhouette are going to be doing that. Some of the highlights and some of the places you can see in Norway. I mean, unbelievable. So I don't know, guys. I think this is going to be a tough decision um, because I threw in the British Isles in there too because there's something about going to Liverpool and walking the footsteps of the Beatles. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to do that? Um, going to Cork. I love this one, the Titanic experience. I can go do the Titanic experience while I'm on a cruise. Hey, love the movie. Just remember, guys, the movie was fiction. Yes, the Titanic did sink, but that was a long time ago. That won't happen now. Don't worry about it. Um, but you know what? I've got a lot of different things. I mean, I just, I just don't know how I'm going to choose because there's so many great things. So I sort of challenge each of you. Where are you going to go this year? Let's get out our planners. Let's try to figure out. I mean, I've sat here and I've gone through many, many different options. I wanted to make sure you're all aware of the of different options of things that might be available to you. And maybe you might want to come along and with me on some of these great trips. As I said, we're going to be in uh, the Caribbean in March. And then who knows where I'm going from there. I think right now I've got Caribbean in my brain. I think I might do that. Bermuda, maybe in May, maybe I'll hop on a European, I don't know, I'm thinking those Northern Europe itineraries look pretty darn special. Um, 
and then, you know, bring myself, do a little Alaska at the end of the summer into that Pacific coastal. And then, you know, it was funny this holiday, we were sitting around chatting and after putting up, I have six Christmas trees. Thank you very much. They are fake. Um, but that was a lot of work putting it up. And um, we were all together as a family and we were chatting and saying, oh my God, it's so much work at the holidays. Why don't we go on a holiday cruise? So we might do that this year. So I don't know. I think I'm, you might have helped me plan the whole entire year. Um, those holiday cruises are a lot of fun. I did one a couple of years ago with mom. We had an unbelievable time. We did all the kids' activities. <laughs> we made ornaments. We decorated the trees. We had a lot of fun. Um, we got up and watched Santa Claus in the morning, you know, do his little parade through the ship with the captain. It was a lot of fun and highly recommend. I mean, it's a great time to spend time with family and do something a little bit different. Um, you know, so share your experiences. And, you know, I always say travel, I've been so lucky to be in that business that allows me to go around the world, see places that I probably would have never seen um, and making the memories. I've got a story for just about every port that I've been in, every country that I've been in. You remember things, you cherish things and you cherish the time that you have to be able to explore these unbelievable places. Don't stay home. You know, I think we all got very complacent during the pandemic, and I think now is the time to get our travel shoes back on. Let's get ourselves out there. Go and explore. Do the things that you wanted to do. Guys, life is too short. That is one thing I have learned. Life is too short, and don't sit around and think, oh, I could have done this and I could have done that, because at the end of the day, you need to go out there and make new memories and let's get exploring and seeing the world. Now, how am I going to do that? Of course, I'm going to give my friends at the cruise web a call and guys, yep, I have a travel agent and my travel agents at the cruise web. And I know you're laughing and saying, well, you know, Kim, you work for a cruise line. Well, I still need my travel agent, my travel agent, these guys, at the cruise web, they know their stuff. They help me out. They book my cruises. I pay for my cruises just like you do. So I go to the professionals, the ones that are going to give me all the insight and I'll be calling my travel agent a little bit later on and saying, Hey, you know, help me figure out the rest of my year because I need to get some of these bookings um, made, get them on the books. So then I can start looking forward to what I'm going to be doing this year. So guys, I thank you for your time. Hopefully I've given you some things to think about and some of the great ports of call that you might be thinking about going to, you know, come along on my journey. I can't wait to hear about your journeys. And thanks so much, as I said, for joining and uh, seize the day, as Captain Kate would say. Have a great one, guys.